Church, I want to take just a moment and say something. I have a friend of mine who is with us today who is also from Texas. He likes the Cowboys. We'll have to let him go by and get by with that, okay? Uh, I've known Richard, I'm going to say more than a decade. We've never had the opportunity to work together before, but he's now with us here to help us for a few months and maybe longer, depending on how much Mabuhay on Filipinas. <laughs> if he likes it here, he may stay a while. And if he don't, he'll go home in about six months. So everybody make him feel welcome. In the meantime, let me introduce him. He'll bring our lesson this morning. Richard. Good morning. I don't know if Ernest knows this. We it was actually sometime in I don't know what year, but sometime in the the 1990s that we first met, and I was impressed with his uh, desire to work um, with people overseas in the Philippines. It was an inspiration to me. I don't think he knows that he does now. Uh, I have done some foreign mission work before. This is my first time. This is my ninth day in the Philippines. I can tell you, I really like it. So praise God for that. <clears throat> this morning, we're going to talk about, I titled the lesson, The Word of Mouth Gospel. <clears throat> if you can think of the various forms of advertisement, what is the best? What is the best way to advertise something? Well, if you think of the different ways that we know of, there are TV commercials, widespread audience, but those cost a lot of money, don't they? There's radio commercials. Those cost money too. There's other forms of advertisements. You can advertise on social media. You can advertise through other types of media. But if you were to ask me, I would say that the best way to advertise something is word of mouth. And the reason is, it doesn't cost anything for one, it's free. When you have, let's say you have a business, maybe it's a restaurant or a hotel, and you have customers that come and they love it. Wow, this is the best food best restaurant, best barbecue, best whatever you want. I like barbecue. And I found a place where I can have the best ribs in town. It even says it on the wall, best ribs in town. They weren't lying. Now, if I'm real satisfied and someone else is looking for good barbecue, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to say, you got to go over here. It's excellent. I might even go online and write a five-star review. Best barbecue in town. Of course, if you're unsatisfied, don't go here. <laughs> you won't like it. But uh, the word of mouth means that somebody is happy with the service or the products that these companies are offering. That ties into our lesson this morning. Because as recipients of God's word, I can tell you five stars doesn't even begin to describe the gospel. The gospel that was preached to us. We call it the good news. To me, that's really kind of an understatement. I can't even say it's great news, excellent news. It's wonderful. It is marvelous. And as a recipient of God's grace, as someone who has been saved through the blood of Jesus, I'm pretty excited about that. Because what's the alternative? Because of my sins, I don't go to heaven. In fact, there is another place in store for those who die in their sins, and that's called Hell. 
and it's not a temporary place. It is also eternal life, but in the wrong place. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 25. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 25. First Peter chapter one, verse 25. And it says, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. So the word of the Lord is good news preached to you. If you have had the pleasure, the honor of having the gospel message of Jesus Christ and salvation through his name shared with you, you are a beneficiary. Be glad, be happy, be excited because it is good news. Turn with me to, uh, this is one of your memory verses. But if you need to go there, it's 2 Timothy chapter 3. And you know where I'm going, right? I'm going to read 16 and 17. What a shocker. <laughs> Those who have been studying uh, e every evening or if you're at home every morning or wherever you are, you know we have mentioned 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, quite often. And here it says, all scripture is breathed out by God. Say it with me, you know it. And profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training. That the man of God, oh, in righteousness, thank you. for <laughs> That the man of God may be complete and quick for every good work. So not only is the, the word of the Lord good news, it is breathed out by God himself. He uses man to actually write the words or to speak the words before they were written down. But when he did, and we now have it written in our Bibles, it is God's word and it is good news. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. Flip over one chapter. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two tells us, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Do you understand what he's saying? Paul wasn't going to live forever. Ernest isn't going to live forever. Not in this world. I won't live forever. You won't live forever. How does the message get passed down? Through you. We are taught by someone. And when we learn, we are to teach others as well. I know in the Old Testament, and you'll see this a lot in Deuteronomy, when the Lord speaks to Israel and he tells them the commands and he tells them, write them on your heart. Teach them to your children. How do the generations and the generations after them know God? Because they were taught. So there's a one responsibility is that we are responsible for teaching our children, our family, and not just them, but anyone that we may cross paths. With. Look at Jeremiah chapter one, the prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter one and verse nine.
Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. We're all there. And it says, then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Okay, so here's an example. Jeremiah wasn't speaking his own words. He was a prophet of God. And God said, you're going to speak, but it's going to be my words that I put into your mouth. So God puts his words in the mouth of those who are to speak it, not keep it. Look at Isaiah 55. Isaiah, right before you get to Jeremiah. Isaiah 55. This should only be just a page, couple of pages. Isaiah 55, verse 11. And it says, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah. God's word is creative. When it is spoken, the desired result is achieved. For instance, Jesus said when he was shortly after Jesus was baptized and he began his earthly ministry, he went into the desert. He fasted for 40 days. Fasting is a time that is dedicated completely to God in prayer humbling yourselves, denying yourself of all things, only thinking of God and only God. But Satan came to him at a time that he might have been the most weakest. He was very hungry. And Satan said, if you are the son of God, cast these stones into bread. This is what... Uh, Jesus said in reply, he said to them, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So what Jesus is saying is, he's not saying man does not need bread to live, but he says man does not live by bread alone. There is something else that is needed for man to live and he's talking about the word of God. Just as the purpose of bread is to nourish the body, the word of God is to nourish our spirit. They both serve a purpose. God's word shall accomplish that which he purposes. And what is the purpose of God? Turn with me to John chapter 20. Verse 31, John chapter 20 and verse 31. Here John explains that he, his gospel account of Jesus had a purpose. It was not an exhaustive account of Jesus's entire life. There was a purpose in his writing. And he tells us this in verse 31 of John 20. And he says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. And here's the purpose that by believing you may have life in his name. And not just for you, but for everyone. Turn to Romans chapter 10. You've got a couple of memory verses here. We're going to read a little bit more than just what your memory verse is here. Romans chapter 10, we're going to read verses 9 through 13. <coughs> Romans 9, I'm sorry, Romans 10, 
9 through 13. And it says, because if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing rich, his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How many? All. For who? Everyone. But how will everyone hear the gospel? Paul tells us now in the next few verses. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. Romans 10, 14 through 17. And it says, how will they, uh, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom they have not heard and how are they to hear without someone preaching and how are they to preach unless someone unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those good news but gospel for isaiah says lord who has here I don't know if you have folks at home can hear. I love hearing people read. And from memory, much of you memorize these, these words, especially 1017, right? Let's say that one again. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So what is the point here? How are people going to believe in Jesus? We just saw John said, I have written everything that I wrote that you may believe in Jesus Christ as the son of God. How are they going to believe? Unless someone tells them, unless they hear, how are they going to hear the gospel? Unless someone is preaching to them and how are they going to preach unless they are sent? Faith comes by hearing, but who will tell them? Let me tell you, we have a calling. We are all called to follow Jesus. Several times throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus telling others to follow him. One example is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew 4, verse 19. This is where Jesus finds Peter. And in Matthew 4, verse 19, Jesus said, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, what did he mean by that? Peter was a fisherman. So Jesus was using an analogy that Peter would be familiar with. Peter was fishing for food. That was his way of putting food on his table. But Jesus says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Because I want you to put spiritual food on every man's table. How about Matthew chapter 9, verse 9? Flip over a few pages. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. Matthew wrote this gospel, but this is where Jesus first called him. And it says, as Jesus passed on from, here, from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. Now notice Jesus didn't pass by and say, oh, tax collector? I'm pretty sure he's not going to want to follow me. 
No, Jesus has the invitation for everyone. No matter who you are, he invites everyone to follow him. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Here, there is a rich man that comes to Jesus with a question. He wants to know how he can be perfect. What is he lacking? Jesus says to him in verse 21, if you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And one more example is in John chapter one in verse 43. John chapter one, verse 43. <laughs> the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. And there are many other examples, but you get the picture. Jesus wants us to follow him. When we follow Jesus and accept the free gift of salvation through him, we have what no one else can provide and no one can take away from us. We have eternal life in heaven with the Lord. If that makes us excited, we should naturally tell others about it. I heard someone say one time, I don't know who the original person who came up with this phrase is, but I heard someone describe it this way. I'm just a beggar telling other beggars where to find the bread. If you have nothing, you live on the streets, you're hungry, but you have no food. You may beg someone for bread. And if you come across someone that says, hey, I've got free bread, it's good bread, I'll give you some. If you know anybody else that needs bread, come send them to me. Are you not going to tell others, hey, there's bread over here, it's free, and it's the best bread I've ever had? Of course. Jesus is the bread of life, as he himself proclaimed in John chapter 6, verse 48. John chapter 6, verse 48. Very short, very short verse. Simply says, I am the bread of life. And Jesus wants us to tell others how to find him. The more important bread is Jesus Christ. When he cast out a demon from a man he told the man to tell others about it. This is in Luke chapter 8 and verse 39. Luke chapter 8 and verse 39. Verse 39 says, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. That man was pretty excited. He was possessed by a demon. There were others that Jesus helped. People who were born paralyzed, people who were born blind. And no doctor on earth could help. No medicine invented by man could cure. But Jesus did it. And why did he do it? Because he wanted to everyone to know he cares about them, not just physically, but spiritually as well. So when you are the beneficiary of something wonderful, something beautiful, something magnificent, 
Keep it to yourself, right? No. Share it. Proclaim it. Jesus Christ is Lord. He has saved my soul. And he can save yours too. What has Jesus done for us? Turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And here's the problem with mankind. A problem that we can't do anything about ourselves. Here, Paul, the author of Romans, says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you might think, well, I'm not alone. Everybody else is sin. So turn to chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. I'm going to read the first part first. And that says, for the wages of sin is death. Whoop. Before we go on, think about that. Wages. What are wages? It's something that you earned. It's something that you deserve. Now we understand, I deserve death. I deserve nothing but death. Richard has sinned. And I deserve to die. But as it goes on, here's the good news. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But well, that's a scam. That can't be right. You're going to tell me that I have sinned. I'm going to hell. And I can't do anything about it. I can't pay my way out of it. Because the wages of sin is a debt I can't take care of. I owe it. Nobody on earth can pay that debt for me. But Jesus did. When he died on the cross, he took my debt, your debt, and he nailed it to the cross. That is the free gift of God. But it comes through who? Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus takes away our sins the very moment we are baptized into his name. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. You should know this very well. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, there it is. Is it a scam? No, when something's too good to be true, but it's true. Wow. I'm going to tell others about this. That should be our reaction. John chapter one, go back to John chapter one. In John chapter one, as Jesus is approaching and John the Baptist sees him, Verse 29 says, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In fact, as a follower of Jesus, we have a command. And that command is found in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew 28. Verse 19 and 20. And it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We are commissioned. We who are the beneficiaries of the blood of the Lamb, who has taken away our sins, are now commissioned by the Lord to share the gospel with others. 
with as many people as possible, all who are willing to hear. If you are not yet a disciple of Jesus, why not become one today? If you believe the gospel that has been shared with you, why not today? If you are ready to start living according to the will of our Heavenly Father, as opposed to your own will, why not today? If you are willing to confess before witnesses here today that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, why not today? If you are ready to have your sins washed away in baptism, receive the promised gift of the Holy Spirit and begin your new discipleship in Christ, then you are ready today. And now I'm going to have this invitation song sung as a time that you who have not yet obeyed the gospel can now come forward and say, I want my sins washed away. I want that good and glorious gift of the heavenly uh, that the Father has given us, eternal life in heaven. I want that too. I want it for me. You can do that. A gift is a gift. It is free. But if you do not receive it, it is nothing to you. It is of no use. That is your responsibility. When you hear the gospel, what are you going to do with it? Friends, I invite you to think about that this morning. If you are a Christian, perhaps maybe you haven't been the light of the world, as I discussed this morning in our devotional, and you want to change and, and be a stronger, brighter light, we can pray for you. We can pray for forgiveness for your sins if you, if you want that. We can pray for you for whatever your need is. And if anyone needs to respond to the gospel, please do so today as we stand and sing.